jobs, new funds, and we still have a significant number of cases both in the Boston area and across Massachusetts. We're going to continue to work around the clock. New strategies in fighting the outbreak. President Trump says that he will close the country to immigrants to prevent the virus from spreading further. This decision comes as the Senate prepares to vote on a second small business rescue bill later today. We're covering the latest being done to contain the COVID-19 emergency. Our Team 7 coverage begins with Kerry Corrado. She is live with more on our national headlines. Corey. Chris, good morning. Now, President Trump plans to suspend immigration. He says he's doing this to protect everyone in our country. In an effort to stop the spread of COVID-19, President Trump says he plans on signing an executive order to suspend immigration to the United States for the time being. He tweeted, in light of the attack from the invisible enemy, as well as the need to protect the jobs of our great American citizens, I will be signing an executive order to temporarily suspend immigration into the United States. Congress is focused on helping small businesses survive. The president saying the Senate plans to vote on another aid package that would replenish the first one. This could exceed $450 billion, although the bill negotiations have been rocky on the floor. The Senate, regretfully, will not be able to pass more funding for Americans' paychecks today. The bill also includes money for testing. Democrats want the White House to commit to a national strategy for testing. Testing is the key that opens the door to our economy. Testing, tracing and isolation. Governors all across the country are relying on the federal help not only for testing, but for supplies. Testing is going to fun- is going to require everyone to work together. Vice President Pence reassuring the country it's a priority. We assured the governors today that we're going to continue to work around the clock to expand the testing capacity. But Maryland's governor said he found help elsewhere in South Korea. We've been doing everything in our power to acquire more tests from the federal government. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we have also had to compete with every state in America. So at this point, negotiations continue. We, but again, we are expecting a vote very soon. We're live in Boston this morning. Kerry Corrado, 7 News, Today, New England. And we are watching Wall Street closely on your closely on your Tuesday morning. Let's take a look here. The Dow is down more. More than 360 points right now. The Dow closing down almost 600 points yesterday amid a historic sell-off in the oil market. It was the Dow's worst day since April 1st. And that sell-off dropping the price of oil into the negatives for the first time in history. The commodity was able to climb back above zero, though, finishing the day at about $1.50 a barrel. The pandemic has caused a huge drop in demand for oil, obviously, because people aren't traveling anywhere, while storage capacity in the U.S. is at its limit. We have some more numbers for you this morning. Take a look. More than 1,800 people have lost their lives because of the coronavirus in Massachusetts alone. There are nearly 40,000 cases across the Commonwealth. The daily number of cases is slowly declining, so that is a bit of good news there. But Boston Mayor Marty Walsh says he's considering new measures because he wants people to stay at home. And some simply aren't listening. John Coco, live now with the latest on that quest to keep people home. John, he was pretty upset. Yeah, Chris, he was. The mayor says after what he saw this weekend, getting police involved, not out of the question. As for schools, getting back to class, well, the chances for that happening, pretty slim. Not too confident we'll have school this year. Boston Mayor Marty Walsh, doubtful that Boston students will get back in the classroom. The work that we do today uh, and the work we can do to prevent the coronavirus today uh, can, can help prevent a surge happening in a few months from now. And he feels like even the next school year could be affected. When school comes back in September, um, it could be a very different looking situation in the classrooms and something that we're going to have to be very cognizant of. And The mayor also frustrated. This weekend I was disappointed in people. Social distancing is what gets us through this. And we saw a lot of people not doing it this weekend. He says people were out playing golf on two different courses in the city, despite the courses being closed. We need to think more about people in the community around you, staying physically distant, wearing a mask, covering the areas is a small sacrifice when it comes to keeping fellow Bostonians alive. The mayor went on to say police had to ask people on one of the courses to leave. And now he's taking a more serious stance. 
We won't hesitate to send police officers to deliver the message. If necessary, deliver citations. And the mayor says that while classrooms may look different, the same could be said for the workplace when people eventually go back. We're live in Boston. John Coco, 7 News, Today New England. And Governor Charlie Baker announcing some housing help for Massachusetts residents. A new housing security law is now in effect that puts evictions and foreclosures on hold for about four months. Tenants and homeowners will still have to pay their rents or mortgages, but no fees will be added for late payments. And Governor Baker also announcing the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program. The new federal program provides up to 39 weeks of unemployment to self-employed workers, independent contractors, and people with limited work history. Applicants Applicants must be able to show their employment is impacted by the outbreak. And Harvard University says it is using its government money to help students in need. The school received more than $8 million from the CARES Act. The school has received some criticism for accepting the money because the school has a $40 billion endowment. Harvard says it will use the funds to help students with living expenses, travel, and adjusting to online education. We're following more news today, and police in Bridgewater are trying to track down the owners of the pit bull you see in these photos. They say that the dog attacked a smaller dog. Anyone with information, you're asked to contact police. And Boston police say that they arrested a man in connection to several arson fires in the Back Bay. Police say that he lit 10 dumpster and trash fires between Friday and Saturday, most of them in alleys behind Newbury and Boylston Streets. Investigators say that this surveillance picture shows William Elliott, the man they say started those fires. He's expected to be arraigned on arson charges sometime today. 610 is your time. Still ahead here on 7 News Today in New England, taking temperatures in a new way. The creator of a new thermometer says it could be crucial to help getting people back to work sooner. And then Uber is making it easier to get essential supplies delivered right to your doorstep. And maybe it's a so sign he should have never left New England. We'll tell you why Tom Brady got into a little bit of trouble in his new home down in Tampa. Clear skies and a frosty start for many communities this morning. This afternoon, tracks of thunderstorm. The timing of them, what to expect over the next seven days ahead. Yeah. And with so many kids home from school, 7 News wants to make sure that they keep on learning. And our weather team is resuming their science lessons on Facebook Live. You can join Jackie and High Soul later today starting at 10.30 a.m. In these uncertain times, people in Massachusetts are struggling, but you can help. First Lady Lauren Baker has launched the Massachusetts COVID-19 Relief Fund to help residents in need. We need to connect those most impacted by COVID-19 with the resources and services they need to stay safe and